Hey everyone, FPS Chadley here, so I wanted to come back and revisit my uh, my Torpedo Evasion video. So it was brought to my attention a while back that uh, the, I, the evasion angle of 90 degrees is actually not the ideal angle. So if we come in here to the 688i Hunter Killer Manual, which uh, if you have access to has a lot of good information and a lot more information that doesn't really matter from the sake of the game but it's cool to know that the subcommand and dangerous waters manuals don't have but as you can see here they actually recommend more of an offset angle and if you've been watching my recent dangerous waters or cold waters videos you may have heard me explain this so i decided to for the fun of it to try and make a little simulation uh to verify that this angle is id is indeed the ideal angle and not 90 degrees so what I did is I made myself a big old spreadsheet here. <laughs> Look at this thing. Uh, where I simulate a torpedo and a submarine, you know, running and figuring out basically like what the range to the from the torp to the sub looks like over time and the size of the sub in relation to the torp over time. So let me go ahead and come in here to GIMP. And we'll draw out what I'm what I'm talking about here. So I got one of those fancy little drawing tablets uh, a few weeks ago, and now I can finally use it. So let's uh, got ourselves a blue background here. We're going to draw ourselves own ship, and we're going to draw ourselves a torpedo. I believe the symbol is this. It's one of those things where it's like you have like a sense of what it's supposed to be, but I can never really remember. So <clears throat> with my little simulation here, I'm assuming that the torpedo is going to be doing, you know, this coming straight up, straight out towards the uh, towards own ship, and then own ship is going to be starting here. So like this is call this like time equals zero for instance. This is the starting point, and own ship is going to be running, you know, at at a potential variety of angles. I can set which angle I wanted to run at to see what the effect is. So if we come back in here to the spreadsheet. Right here, we got a plot of one of these. So, uh, I guess the way I should show you the way I modeled it too, shouldn't I? So basically, what I did is I just I found a mathematical way to determine like a solid angle, and that's pretty much if you take a shape and give it a distance away from you, you should be able to figure out you know what percentage of like if you were to draw a sphere around you, like draw draw like a, a hollow sphere. If you like look inside the sphere that encompasses your entire vision. 360 degrees of your vision quote unquote you got a 360 degrees around you and uh 90 degrees up and down is there another i think those are the two angles you need to describe everything so uh 180 up and down and 360 around you so you have this sphere that encompasses everything around you that you can see so basically what i'm trying to figure out is if you take like we can call this the sub if you take the sub basically just figure out project that back to the sphere and just figure out how, how much space this is actually taken up of your entire sphere. So that's what a solid angle is. If you've ever, that comes into play in radiation problems, radiative heat transfer, radiative heat transfer, stuff like that. <clears throat> so basically I did not like, you know, model, you know, complex looking sub shape here or anything like that. This is my <laughs> complex sub shape. I did not model anything like this. What I modeled was more like this. So what I basically did is I took, you know, the length of a boat and uh, its beam. And I basically just made a solid cylinder uh, to determine, to determine uh, a, a rough approximation of this of the surface area of a sub now subs aren't this big but if you kind of consider that all subs have you know they all have a tapered bow and or they all have like a rounded bow and the tail of their subs all generally come to a point and that they all have like sails of varying sizes and you can kind of just i'm just going ahead and approximating it as a cylinder here for our purposes it's good enough we just want a, a chunk of object that's approximately as big as a submarine so if we come back here to this on this plot here this is basically what i'm showing so this blue line is taking our t equals zero time here torpedo running straight this way sub is here we assume the sub is already at flank speed and then the sub starts running off in some direction 
Well, that's black. That's fine, though. You get the gist. The sub starts running off in some, some direction. And this blue line here signifies the, the range of the torpedo to the submarine. <clears throat> so we're obviously going to get to a closest point. And then once it gets past that, it's going to start getting further away. Uh, for this simulation, I'm doing a, a LA at flank 32 knots, starting distance of 8,000 yards or 4 nautical miles. Here's the dimensions of the submarine, and then the side area and back area, and then here's the speed of the torpedo, just any torpedo, 55 knots. So for the purposes of this simulation, that's kind of primitive, so we're not assuming the snake can torp. Did I just say that? We're not assuming the torp can snake, and then... uh no further evasive action from the from the from the LA. You can make this more complex if you wanted to, but I don't think it's necessary. This what I did ended up giving me results that I wanted to see, <laughs> so that means it's right, doesn't it? So here we have the solid angle, and basically bigger is worse. So as the this is the torp starting out here, you get your solid angle around this. As it gets closer, it gets to its maximum, and then down here we get a very very sharp peak reduction in the solid angle. That's when the torp is exactly behind. And something that was interesting for me to note is that this point always happened when the, uh, uh, when the torpedo, well, when the torpedo was, when the submarine had the smallest cross section to the torpedo was always at the shortest range. And that didn't, that wasn't necessarily intuitive for me. That was kind of surprising for me, but regardless, and you, uh, the torpedo passes behind the, the baffles. I guess I should be showing this in this picture I drew, huh? So we got our torp here. So let's say we're now no longer at t equals zero or at some further point in time here in the future. My, my familiarity with GIMP on the fly is not the best. So let's go ahead and get back to this red. So the torp is here. Own ship is now here. So there's a, this is our point of closest approach right here. We had our own ship running from right here. This is the torpedoes basically gotten to where the submarine started off. So this is your point of closest approach. And then as the sub moves further along here, and the torp moves further along here. The distance opens up from this point. So when the torp is actually more, so as the torp comes back here, not out of the woods yet, as as shown by this graph here. So just because it's reached the point of closest approach does not mean you were in the clear. Uh, you can still see that the solid angle here is you can reach as the same peak over here, and this is by design. This isn't like a coincidence. This is in this graph I chose the uh, the ideal angle for this boat speed and torpedo combination. <clears throat> so if you got a torp like this, with its seeker cone, if it's like a snaking torp. You could still expect it to, you know, snake this way and see your boat and potentially get a lock on. And then if it's a Mark 48, you know, it, it flies straight, but the seeker goes back and forth like that inside the head of the torpedo. So you don't want to necessarily just run at that 90. So if I, if I manipulate this here, if we run at that 90, you can see that on the, the leg out, your cross section gets huge, but on the on the leg back, it's it's smaller at that point. But if you switch it to this ideal angle of the 125, just cocked back about almost almost 45 more degrees, you get even you get the smaller cross section here, <clears throat> and then the uh, the same cross section on when the torpedoes pass behind you, but it can still kind of snake and see you. So at this rate, you want to kind of keep it the same. So if you if you were to go ahead and make this a steeper angle further, like 150, you can see that you're your angle gets a uh, a lot a lot bigger back here, which is bad um, because then the torp could potentially it still has yet to reach its closest approach. Okay, so this is interesting. So okay, when I said that before, when the minimum is always at the closest approach, that must just be at the ideal angle because here at this steeper angle, the minimum cross section happens before the point of closest approach. So at the closest approach here. This is interesting. So you, you can't really convey any kind of distance between torp and boat here. I'd have to plot that out too. But yeah, this is it. So you don't all, you want to run at this ideal angle because if you run too shallow, you get this, uh, the torp is a huge cross section of you up front. If you run too steep, then you get this huge cross section in back. And of course, if you run 180 just straight away, it'll just catch up to you. You'd have to be at a certain distance to outrun it. 
So I went through and, uh, you know, given I, I iterated a few times to find some some ideal some ideal angles here. Given uh, if you hold if you hold sub speed constant, but change torp speed, what kind of angles do you get? And if you hold torp speed constant, but you change sub speed, because sometimes you know, sometimes you evade at a slower speed, so it's worth knowing how that affects things. So if you're going at flank speed and the torp speed varies, the faster the torp, the shallower the ang angle you want to run at. That is closer to 90 degrees. So if you got like a torp at 70, you want to run at about 117 for the ideal or for the, the, the greatest reduced solid angle in both the, f the forward pass and the rearward pass. And then if you've got a slow torp at like 40, you want to run closer to like 150. So the whole gist of this is basically these numbers, one, 117 to 143, are in pretty good agreement with what the, six, the 688i manual shows here, and that's pretty cool. So if you've got a torp at 55 knots and you change your sub-speed, uh, the slower you go, the shallower you want your angle to be. But it's it's worth noting down here at these slower speeds that the uh, the solid angle gets pretty big, <clears throat> gets pretty big, which basically signifies you might just not be going fast enough to get out of the range of the seeker cone there. So the main takeaway from this video <laughs> and all this blabbing on is that you pretty much want to try and run at like 135 degrees around that neighborhood, which is pretty much which is 90 plus 45. So. So basically at the angle I showed in here, I drew this at, at approximately plus 135 degrees from the torpedoes course. That's the main takeaway. If you run at 90, um, oh, speaking of which, a while ago they did some experimentation. I forget who was with me, but I think it was Eric and Hetty were with me. And uh, so I decided to try and test this out with a 90 degree and the one the 140 degree angle stuff. So we were using a Mark 48 against an Alpha alpha was going flank speed so first we tried it out with the oblique angle like the 140 degrees and at the range of 4,000 yards uh running at 140 degrees the alpha was able to dodge the torpedo but if we then change it to even at 2,000 yards the alpha was able to dodge the mark 48 by doing this angular run of course i was replicating the, re the results of, i was replicating my initial conditions of the experiment which assumes that the sub is running at flank to start and in the proper direction uh, but that's for the purposes of trying to do even comparisons now if we run it again at 2000 yards but the alpha is running at 90 degrees it did not evade the torpedo so the torpedo was able to see a big enough solid angle to lock onto the alpha so you really want to make sure that you are going cocked back at an angle and the the the, the reason behind this is really that you're trying to not only get out of the way of the torpedo but also try and like move away from it at the same time and the proof is in the pudding. If you run at 90, you're just presenting too too big of a cross section to the boat. Running at that oblique angle, you really minimize like how big how big your sub looks. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, I will be uploading this spreadsheet if you want to mess around with it. Um, these little I don't know what color this is. Is this orange or brown or something? These input boxes. I, I marked them with the input style. So these are the numbers you can change. I guess this should be better labeled. This is the starting range. Torpedo speed, submarine speed, angle of evasion. Uh, for some reason, I have it set up to use negative angles, so make sure your angle is negative. And then this is the submarine dimensions here. <clears throat> so you can go ahead and mess around with this. Let's go ahead for the hell of it and mess around with the alpha. Let's do 43 knots. Assume it's going against a spearfish 70-knot 70, 70 torpedo. And we got a length of 267 feet and 31 beam. So this here, we're probably going to want close to like 115 or something. No, that's too much. 117. Not too much further. 125. So you end up with the alpha getting about an ideal evasion angle of about know, 127 degrees, which is right in line. Uh, if we bumped up to 135, which is the shorthand, yeah, you're probably fine with that. But yeah, the ideal angle here really would be more like a 125 or a 127. That's very precise, almost more precise than, you know, playing a scenario gives you more precision than you can deal with because usually you're starting out slow and not at the ideal angle. So one three one two one two zero to one five zero. This is a good range. Just aim for that. It's uh, much better than ninety. <laughs> so you can see with ninety, that solid angle's up at like point four, but even with just one two zero, that gets down you know twenty five percent smaller. 150. 150 ain't really doing you too much good either there. 
So basically, the faster the torpedo, the shallower you want to be, and the slower the torpedo, the steeper you want to be. But in all, in all actuality, a slower torpedo, you can really just, you're more likely to be able to outrun it at the 90 degrees there. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. I'll be using this uh, this little doodad thing more often now. This thing's pretty cool. It's better than trying to use that whiteboard. So yeah, <laughs> I'll see you guys later. Have a good one. As always, good hunting.